Well, all right, everybody. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. If I didn't see you earlier before Christmas, Merry New Year. How's that work? I don't know how it works these days, but hope everybody had a great holiday season with your family or maybe without your family. It was great. I don't know how it works. Uh, I don't know if uh, the presents that you got for Christmas are the presents that you wanted for Christmas. Um, but we hope it was great. Hope it's been a great time. And now we're on to the new year, and we're looking for uh, some exciting things to happen in 2024. I can't believe I'm saying 2024. COVID was four years ago, by the way. Just, just That's crazy, right? Four years ago, yeah. So uh, how about those New Year's resolutions? Anybody making some resolutions? Raise your hand if you're making some New Year's resolutions. How many of you are praying about New Year's resolutions right now? How many of you feel confident that you will stick to these New Year's resolutions? Yeah. I mean, they're a good idea, you know? I think mean, it's a fresh start, new page, a lot of new exciting things happening, and so we want to hit the new year with, with some new ideas and some new ways of doing things, and it's good. In fact, today, we're gonna jump into a story that I think is gonna help us with our New Year's resolutions. It's gonna help us with some ways to kind of look at the new year. And so we're just gonna jump right into it. So if you have your, have your Bible on your phone or an actual Bible, you can turn to Acts chapter eight. And we're gonna be in verse 26. Acts chapter eight, verse 26. And normally we like to stand up and read the scripture. And so today, I'd like to do this, but I'm just gonna give you a heads, heads up. It's gonna be a little while. We're gonna stand up for a little while, all right? About two minutes. If you can stand up for two minutes while we read, that'd be great, because we're in verse 26 of Acts chapter eight, and we're gonna read all the way through 40. So let's stand and read God's word together. Acts chapter eight, verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning. Seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come and sit with him. And now the passage of the scripture he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom, I asked, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? And then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with the scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And they were going along the road, and they came to some water, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and he passed through, as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would use this story in your Bible to encourage us, to equip us, to challenge us. I pray for your Holy Spirit to guide the words that come out of my mouth, to open our hearts to what you have to say to us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Well, <clears throat> it's a great story. It, maybe you're familiar with it, maybe you're not. Uh, I'm gonna catch you up a little bit on, on what happens in this story. You got a guy named Philip, 
In just two chapters before that, in chapter six, is the first time we ever hear about Philip. Nobody had ever heard of Philip before until two chapters ago. And the only reason that we hear about Philip is because the apostles, the, the, the 12, there's a new 12 apostles, are, are starting the new church. Jesus is gone. This is the new church. This is how Christianity is spreading. Things are exciting. Things are going really well. Things are getting uh, really exciting so much that more and more people are coming, but it's causing a problem. And it causes a problem where the, the, the 12 apostles say, hey, we need to delegate some other duties to some people that we're gonna call deacons for the very first time. And these deacons are gonna help us with some of these other kind of tasks that will allow us to, to preach more and teach more. So if, if these guys can go and help look after the widows and the orphans and take care of the food, that would really kind of free us up to do the real ministry kind of stuff. So they appoint seven guys. And two of them, one is a guy named Stephen, and the other guy is a guy named Philip. In the next two chapters, you don't hear about any of the apostles. You don't hear about the big 12. You just hear about these two guys, these two deacons, these just two average, ordinary guys like you and me, and what God does with them. And what happens is Stephen, ordinary Stephen, he's just walking around the marketplace and shares the gospel and people start coming to Jesus and giving their lives to Jesus and trusting in Jesus so much that it is, ang it is making people angry. The same people that crucified uh, Jesus are now angry with Stephen, so much so that they killed Stephen. They murdered Stephen. Well, this causes all kinds of of persecution, and it really just starts unpacking persecution uh, widespread throughout Jerusalem, in that city, in that area, that if you were one of these new Christians, you were being persecuted to the point that it caused a lot of those new Christians to flee and leave Jerusalem. Nobody else wants to be a martyr. Nobody else wants to be murdered. And so they're fleeing and getting out of town. And Philip is one of them. And Philip goes to this place called Samaria. Samar Samaria, sorry. Samaria, Samaria. Oh yeah, we're, we're in Cobb County. All right, here we go. So we're in Samaria. And, uh, and if you remember the Good Samaritan story, remember the Jews don't like the Samaritans. Samaritans don't like the Jews. So Philip's like, all right, I'm gonna go to Samaria and hang out there because I know uh, the Jews that were trying to kill Jesus aren't gonna come there because they don't like Samaritans. They're not gonna hang out there. So I'm gonna go to Samaria. So that's where I go. And he starts and he hangs out there. And guess what? He starts sharing the gospel. He just sharing about this Jesus guy. Like, can you believe what happened? And then the, and then the, and then the resurrection, and then, woo, I mean, it's exciting. And everybody starts coming to Jesus uh, there and starts trusting in Jesus in Samaria, and things are going great. And then we get to verse 26. Things are going great. And then this happens. Let's look at verse 26. Now, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, rise and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the desert place. And he rose and he went. <laughs> I, just, I just think this is amazing. This is, a, first of all, it's amazing, like an angel, a messenger of the Lord. Somebody is, is giving clear instructions from God to Philip, and the instructions are what? To go to a road. Not even to a place. I just want you to go to a road. There's, there's nothing else. I just, there's not like, hey, I want you to go to this road and then you're gonna meet this guy and then this is gonna happen. It's just, I want you to go to this road. And, and, uh, and scholars think that even, even the wording there means I want you to go to this road in the middle of the day, in the desert, in the middle of the day the hottest time of the day, right? So this is the instruction. Now, remember, things are going really well in Samaria. People are coming to Christ. Maybe a church is formed. I don't know. Things are good. And then all of a sudden, Philip gets instructions to go to a road, and he does. Isn't that amazing? Like, that, that sticks out to me in a powerful way that 
And, and for a couple of reasons. And one of them is, it, it kind of gives some questions. And, and we're gonna look at four questions that I think are gonna help us in 2024. And the first question that comes to mind is, what channel are you on? And I think about the, the fact that, that, that Philip was on God's channel. And, and I think about it this way. So I got, you know, maybe you got some of these uh, for Christmas. Anybody know what these are? Walkie talkies. It's got to be the, the most fun name ever. It's a, it's a walkie talkie, right? So the idea is um, that I, I, I'm on a channel and the other person's on a channel. And um, let me just do this. Um, Brady, can, you, can I borrow you for a second? Come up here. All right. How was your Christmas? Good. Good. Okay, great. All right. So let's pretend um, in my mind this is going differently, but then I realize I have a microphone. So we're just going to go, uh, Brady, come in. Can you hear me? Just say yes. Okay, cool. All right, Brady, I want you to walk to the black line. Hold the, hold the microphone. Yeah, there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Are you there? Cool. All right, I want you to go a little bit further. Yep, stop. I want you to go one, two, three, four, five. Do you see the guy in the blue vest right there? Waving his hand. I want you to walk to that guy. Cool, stop. Now I want you to look underneath his seat. Do you see something? All right, grab it. Introduce yourself to the man while you're doing it. <laughs> this is Brady. Pull hard. Oh, that's good. What you got? Dum dums. All right, you get to keep them. Great job, and I'll take, the, I'll take the radio. It's Christmas, so you have to share. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's real simple, right? Like, I'm on a channel, Brady's on a channel. And, and what happens is, is that if, if these channels are different, it doesn't work. If Brady's on channel two and I'm on channel one, he's not gonna hear me. He's not gonna hear anything. And I, and I think, man, this is, this is us. Like this, look, look, look at this, this is great. Like we're here, we are worshiping, we are on fire, we are in sync, we are doing whatever the Lord wants us to do today. And then I think sometimes in the afternoon, I just switch that channel off. And then I go to work. And then I go to my office. And then I'm doing my stuff. And then I go to school. And then I go to my campus. And then the weekend comes. And I go to a different channel. And then Sunday comes and oh, I'm back on God's channel. All right, holy, you alone. You alone, Lord, you alone. Holy is the Lord. Then comes Monday. Like what channel are you on? Because here's, here, I'll cut to the chase. Here's what I think I want most for us in this next year. I want us to see that God is speaking to you Monday through Friday. That the Holy Spirit that is impacting your heart and filling your heart with joy right now in this worship service is the same Holy Spirit that is working in you Monday through Friday. That he has instructions for you that you're missing out on potentially because you're not listening. You're, you're switching off. And, and maybe for you, your, your faith is a Sunday faith. Maybe you need not even thought about the fact that God wants to do something with you Monday through Friday. Maybe you haven't even considered it. And so I think that one of the things this story does is it's, it's telling us that, hey, God's got instructions for us right now and maybe tomorrow, and maybe the next day. But I, I, wanna, I want you first, we gotta have like our ears on. We gotta have our radio to the right channel. And, and I also wanna make sure that you understand that, that he is giving you instructions. If you're a follower of Jesus, he's giving you instructions. He's giving you, uh, actually, a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of instructions. And, and I want to make sure that we're all clear on this. In fact, Matthew 28, 
18 through 20 says, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. That's a pretty good instruction. That's a pretty good mission statement for this week. Clay's gonna get into more of this next week in our new series. Another one is Mark 16, 15. He said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. I couldn't have said it in a more simple way. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. It doesn't get any more simple. It doesn't get any more unclear than that. And then Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So let's make sure that we're listening and we're on the right channel. One of the ways that we can do this and make sure that we're on the right channel, uh, I like what Henry Blackaby write, uh, wrote in his book, Experience of God. He says, God speaks by the Holy Spirit through the Bible, prayer, circumstances, <coughs> excuse me, and the church to reveal himself, his purposes, and his ways. So just think about those four categories. Your Bible, that's a great New Year's resolution, maybe getting more into the Bible and reading the Bible daily on a regular basis understanding his word, prayer, talking to God, communicating back and forth, having real conversations, looking at the circumstances in your life, seeing what's going on around you, looking up. Sometimes we're just kind of looking down the whole time, looking up and seeing what's going on, seeing the people in your work, in your neighborhood, on the pickleball court, in the gym, in your classroom. Like what's going on that maybe God wants to do something with you, with that person? And then the church, community. I mean, this is the idea of the church, right? Like we're coming together, we're in biblical community. And maybe that needs to be more regular. Maybe this next year, it's like, hey, I'm gonna spend more regular time in this biblical community so that I can best understand and hear God speak in his instructions for me. Second question that comes to mind is, uh, are you willing to do the small things? in 2024. Uh, again, this, this instruction from God, go to this road, seemed like incomplete, seemed like it was a communication breakdown. Uh, God, I think you may have left, your, your transmission kind of ended short there. It just said go to the road. It didn't say go to the road, da, 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 da. It just said go to the, I think, I think you're missing, and, then, and God's going, no, I just, I, I just want you to go to the road. Are you willing to go to the road? And there's all kinds of excuses, right? Like, but, but God, did you see, like, I'm, I'm really, I'm doing well in Samaria. Like, they really like me. They, they, people are coming to Christ. Good things are happening, Lord. Like, I don't know if you saw that or not. Uh, I mean, the road, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big road, God. I don't, I don't know exactly how long this road is, but it's a lot of space and there's a lot of time and I don't know if I have time to do it. It's, you know, so... Are you, are you willing to do the small thing? Because I think sometimes maybe we want the big thing to happen and God's going, hey, I just want you to do this thing. Do this thing first. And if we're not willing to do the small things, then we're not gonna get to the bigger things. So are you willing to do it? Let's see what happens when Philip is faithful with the small things. Maybe another excuse, I thought about this as well, is that you, maybe you feel un, unqualified. Maybe you feel uneducated. Maybe you feel like you have to be a, a seminary student or a professor or a missionary or something like that. But I think the whole point of this story with Philip and with Stephen is that they're just regular people. They're just regular people. That God's going, yes, exactly. You are exactly who I want to use to do extraordinary things with. Thank you for saying yes, Stephen. Thank you for saying yes, Philip. And let's see what happens here. 
Verse, go to verse 27, and it says, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah, and the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So this Ethiopian, he's what we call a God-fearer. In other words, he's from uh, Africa. He's probably from a, a country at that time called Nubia. He's a court official. He's probably like the minister of finance for the queen, who is, uh, her title is Candace, which is kind of like Caesar. It's a it's not a name name, it's a title name, like Caesar. So she's Candace, the queen of Ethiopia, and, um, and he's like the minister of finance, and he is on a spiritual pilgrimage to go to Jerusalem and learn more about the Jewish faith. That's all we know. We don't know who told him about it. We don't know how he got that. We don't know, we don't, we don't, we don't know. But we just know that he went to Jerusalem, and now he's on his way back home, and he's got this scroll, right? So the small thing was, hey, Philip, I just want you to go to the road, and Philip does that. He's obedient, he's faithful. Okay, it doesn't make sense in my head. I can't make sense of it, but you, okay, all right, I'm going, and I'm going to the road, and here I am at the road. Here I am at the road. And then all of a sudden, he sees this Ethiopian. He sees this entourage, right? So it's probably not just him, because he's reading, and he was reading a scroll. They didn't have books yet, so you can't read a scroll and steer a chariot and a horse. Distracted driving, we don't wanna do that. So he's probably got people, and there's an entourage, and, uh, and then the next instruction is what? First is go to the road. The second instruction that he gets from the Spirit, from the Holy Spirit, is what? Go to the chariot. Not go to the chariot and then you're gonna get inside and then you're gonna, and then you're gonna, it's just, hey, I just want you to go to the chariot. Thank you for going to the road. Great job. Now I just want you to go to the chariot. Are you willing to do the small things? And Philip was. So he says, okay. And not only does he go to the chariot, he runs up to the chariot. Now think about this. These guys don't look like Philip. They're probably different color skin. They probably dress different. They probably sound different, talk different, smell different. These are not Philip's people. And you're asking me to go up and get even closer to this strange group of people in the middle of nowhere in a desert? Philip's like, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go. And it says that he runs. He runs up to the chariot. I love that. I'm gonna go to the road, and I'm gonna go to the chariot. So he runs up to the chariot, and guess what happens when he gets there? All of a sudden, he starts hearing his language and his scripture. Can you imagine? You're walking up to this strange group of people, and then all of a sudden, He's hearing Greek. He's a Greek-speaking Jew. And you're speaking Greek. And, and they're reading out loud, as they did, was in the custom of the time. And he's hearing his language. And then what he hears in his language is his Bible at the time, his scripture, his Isaiah. Isn't that amazing? What's even more amazing is if you'll turn to Isaiah chapter 53. I just, wanna, I just want you to think about this for a second because it just kind of blew my mind a little bit and I want to make sure that it blows your mind. So, when, when, when all right, chariot's going this way, Philip intersects chariot. When he gets to chariot, he hears verses seven and eight of Isaiah chapter 53, which in my Sherlock Holmes uh, detective skills, I deduced that he's probably reading verses before that, before Philip gets there. So in my estimation, he's reading the first couple of verses of chapter 53 before he gets to seven and eight. So look at verse four. 
He's, I mean, you, can, you can read one, two, and three, but for time, look, let's start in verse four. It says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity. That's a fancy word for sins. He has laid on him the sins of us all. Who in the world could this be talking about? It's Christmas time. Love it. So imagine the Ethiopian, I'm gonna call him Carl for some reason. Carl is in his chariot and he's reading those verses and wondering who is this person talking about? And then as he's reading seven and eight, he says he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that has led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before it shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. And then Philip walks up. And Philip asked a really disarming, very simple question. And he says, turn a bird. No, he says, do you understand what you're reading? Hey, you understand what you're reading? Hey, do you, do you understand what, I don't know if he's running while he's, do you understand what you're reading? I mean, just think about how God lined up his perfect timing of reading those verses, and then Philip, just out of the blue, this Greek-speaking Jewish person who understands this scripture that I'm reading has just shown up. So what is the Ethiopian to do? And he says, I ask you, does the prophet say this about himself or about somebody else? And then he invited him into the chariot. Sorry, I skipped that part. He invited him uh, into the chariot and he says, how can I unless somebody guides me? Maybe this week somebody is, is in your life that God wants you to help guide them. I know sometimes we just kind of think about me and me and Lord, what are you doing for me? And Lord, I just got all these problems and Lord, I just need you and Lord, I, 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 and maybe God's going, hey, you know what? Maybe the answer is that I need you to go help her. I need you to go guide him. I need you to disciple her. I need you to disciple that group of guys. I know, I, know, I know you have problems, I know you have worries, I know you have issues, I know you have pain and struggle. I'm just telling you that maybe part of the answer is you doing this with them. That's the whole idea of church. Who can help me unless somebody guides me? And he invites him into the chariot and Philip explains it. I mean, it's a softball, right? It's a softball. But here's the thought that jumped out at me is you don't, <laughs> you don't get to ride in the chariot if you don't go to the road. You don't get this moment if you don't go to the road. If you don't go to the road, you don't go to the chariot. If you don't go to the chariot, you don't get invited into the chariot and explain the gospel. And that's why I wanna be better at doing the small things. The small things I think are just so small, insignificant, not worth my time, I'm too busy. God's going, hey, I'm just telling you. Like there's, it might seem small, but maybe God's got a bigger plan in store if we're faithful with those things and just obedient and just listening and, and like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do this. Yes, I can do that. Think about <clears throat> question number three. Are you ready to share the gospel? I think one of the things this story does for me is that it makes me think, you know, uh, he, he just walks up, he asks, you know what you're reading? Do you understand? Can I help you understand? And he takes this passage, which is clearly talking about Jesus, and he just uses what's in front of him. 
There are lots of ways to share the gospel. There's not one way to share the gospel. You may have your favorite way of doing it. You may have a great way of doing it. Great, I love for you to keep doing that. If you don't have like your favorite way of sharing the gospel, uh, there are lots of tools. There are two tools up here on the screen that, we'll put, that you can put on your phone. One is just called a Life on Mission app, and the other one is called God Tools. And these are both great apps you can put on your phone. Another great app is called YouVersion. It's the whole Bible that you can put on your phone. And both of these can help you just get better at sharing the gospel. But there's, there's, there's four things that I would just say it, that you would want, uh, just pop quiz, like just kind of think to yourself, if, if somebody asks you, hey, what is the gospel today? Or you have a relative or boss or somebody this week, it's like, hey, it's Christmas time, keep hearing about the gospel. Uh, I have no idea what the gospel is. Can somebody tell me what the gospel is? Could you share the gospel? Could you explain the gospel? Do you know the gospel? And we use it so flippantly sometimes, and, and, and we use it a lot around here, that it just made me think, maybe, maybe some of our folks don't even know what the gospel is. Like We hear it, but we don't know it. And so there's four pieces of it that I just would say are pretty, pretty important. I mean, there's lots of ways to share it, but I want you to just think about just kind of the idea of there's creation, fall, redemption, restoration. Creation, God loves us and created us. Fall, we've all sinned and fallen short of God's standard. Redemption is the idea that by Jesus dying on the cross for us, he paid the debt that we owed and covered our sins. So he's redeeming us. He's not erasing the sins, he's redeeming. A redemption, a rescue plan. And then restoration. is the idea that we are, once we put our trust in Jesus as our savior and king, that we are restored into a right relationship with God and have eternal life with God. But we also have a savior and king with us for the rest of our life here on earth. So could you share the gospel with somebody this week? Could you explain what that looks like? And again, I want you to understand all of this is directed by the Holy Spirit. We don't save anybody. We just simply share the good news, the same good news that Philip is sharing with the Ethiopian. We get the chance to share with others whenever. And we're not in charge of it either. And could you, could you share the gospel this week? I, I, one, one of the things that I'll just be very transparent. One of the things that kind of changed my life happened about five or six years ago because I was not good at sharing the gospel. I was not good at uh, having gospel conversations and, um, and we brought in a team of folks to our church and we, we had a gospel conversation training. And we spent a Friday night and we fed some people and we got trained on how to, how to share the gospel, how to talk about the gospel, how to talk about Jesus, the good news. And I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I know this stuff. I know this stuff, yeah. And then we decided we're gonna go out. We're gonna leave this building on a Friday night and we're gonna go out and we're just gonna see if there's a couple people that we could just run into outside the walls of Johnson Ferry. We didn't tell people where to go. We just tell them to just go. You could go to the avenues. You could go to Trader Joe's. You could go to Starbucks. You could go uh, to Target. You could go to Publix. And just see if you could just offer to pray for two people. Say, hey, it's Christmas time. I know there's a lot of needs this time of year. Just wanna know if there's anything that we could pray for for you or your family. And just ask that question. And just see what the Holy Spirit is up to. Well, two stories come out of that. First, <laughs> some of my favorite ones. Uh, so there's a husband and wife, uh, to my life, to, I, I can't remember who they are. Uh, I just remember the story. So husband and wife, they go out. And the husband did not want to go out. He did not want to do this. And they go to Publix. And they get to Publix. And they're walking around. And they're just kind of, you know, 
praying to see who it is that maybe God wants him to run into. The, the husband locks eyes with the deli guy. And he walks up and he thinks, well, maybe this is who I'm supposed to reach out to. And so he walks up to the deli guy and the deli guy goes, can I help you? And uh, the guy just freezes. And he says, I, I'd like a pound of provolone. <laughs> and so the guy goes and gets his cheese and then he hands him a pound, it's a lot of cheese, of provolone. And then he just stares at it and he just, it's like, this is just silly. He, and he says, actually, I didn't need cheese. Um, but it's Christmas time, and I was just wondering how I could pray for you. And the, and the deli guy and this husband that didn't want to do it had this amazing gospel conversation. Same night, I'm with my, uh, phew, sorry, with my friend, Troy, and, uh, and he's like, all right, well, let's just go to Target. All right, fine, we're gonna go to Target. And, uh, and again, I'm like, I just, I don't wanna do this, but I'm on staff, so whatever. <laughs> go to Target, and it's Christmas time, so, I mean, it's almost the same time of year. Walk in, we're in the upper deck parking lot, out, outdoor parking lot of Target, walking into Target, and there's like three young-ish people, like college age, and they're on the hoods, uh, sitting on the hood of their car, and they're just laughing, having a good time, so we thought we'd ruin it. And uh, <laughs> just go over there. And so we're like, hey, you want to? Yeah, okay, 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 fine. So we walk over, and we say, hey, look, uh, we don't want to bother you, too late. So we don't want to bother you, uh, but it is Christmas time, and just thought maybe uh, if there's anything we can pray for for you or your family, and the, the tallest kid jumps off his car and he goes, yes! And so all of us froze at that point. And he said, I prayed this morning that God would send somebody to encourage me in my faith. And I'm just telling you guys, from that point on, why am I not doing this? Why are we not doing this? What are we holding on to? What are we worried about? Because if God is in it, then he's in it. And if he's not, it's a short conversation. But if he's in it, oh my goodness. And you get to experience the same thing. Just like Philip, just like the husband, because the Holy Spirit is doing this. You get to experience the Holy Spirit on a Tuesday. By the way, this story happened on a Wednesday. I don't know that for a fact, but I just think I know it's in the middle of the week, right? This didn't happen on a Sunday. This didn't happen in church. This happened probably when Philip was the most busiest. All right, I'm over my time. Last question, are you ready to go public? And here's why. Romans 10, verse 14, sorry, 10, 9 and 10. says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There's somebody in this room, you may not have ever done that yet, that you need to do that today. Just confess with your mouth. Say it out loud like you're... On, on a wedding day, if I just nodded to my wife, you know, do you, do you love Heather? Uh, do you want to marry her? That doesn't work. You gotta say it. You gotta say it. I do. I, yes, I do. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For the, with the heart, one believes and is justified, and with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. But here's the kicker, and this is why we gotta go. Romans 10, 14, how then will they call on him who they have not believed and how are they to believe in him of whom they have never even heard of? And how are they here about him without somebody preaching and how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Amen. Last question, are you ready to go public in 2024? 
Are you ready to go public? When you, when you finish the story, he shares the gospel, the eunuch asks the question, he goes, hey, look, there's water, there's water. What prevents me from being baptized right now? I've got, I've got my whole entourage, I've got witnesses, I've got people that probably work under me, this is gonna be really embarrassing, it's gonna be great. And Philip gets in the water with him. They get in the water and he baptizes him. And the, and the scripture says that when he came up out of the water, that Philip was gone. That word literally means snatched away. And I believe there's a supernatural snatching away where the Ethiopian comes up out of the water and Philip is gone. And not just to Philip, but to the whole entourage, Philip is nowhere. And it says that the Ethiopian left rejoicing. Now, do you think he's gonna tell this story to his friends and family when he gets back to Ethiopia? Absolutely. He's gonna share this story the rest of his life. He's gonna share this story to <laughs> complete strangers. He's gone public with his baptism, but he's also gone public with his faith. And maybe like this eunuch that Maybe you need to follow through with baptism. Maybe, maybe you've never done that. Maybe you said yes to Jesus. Maybe you've confessed with him. Maybe, maybe you are a Christian, but you've never made that public display uh, by being baptized. Maybe that's your next step for 2024. For some of us, maybe we've already done that, but maybe there's some other ways that we can go public next year. Maybe it's just going public at work or at school do you have classmates that have no idea that you follow Jesus? Do you have coworkers that have no idea what you do on Sunday? Do you have neighbors that we have the, the most exciting news there is that we've just never shared with them? And maybe we just embrace the awkward and just knock on the door and say, Howdy, neighbor. I don't know what that looks like for you. But maybe as we pray about it and think about it, how can I go public? So in this next year, are, are we on the right channel? Are we even in listening? Are we willing to do the small things? Could we share the gospel? It's good news, y'all. Is our football trivia greater than our gospel trivia? And then are we ready to go public? This isn't a secret society. God wants us to go big and be obedient. Let me pray for us. Father, I thank you for this story. I thank you that it's not by mistake that you put it in here. You put it in here for a reason, for us to read it and to think about how we can apply it to our lives. And I pray for each and every person in this room that as we take on this new year that we would... Listen, <laughs> listen and obey. That we would not miss out on these great opportunities that are happening all around us. That we would see the Holy Spirit at work in our lives every day. That we get to experience the joy of living out our faith in just everyday conversations and everyday ways but just be surprised how the Holy Spirit shows up. Help us to be obedient, help us to follow through as we worship you, not just here on Sunday, but worship you with our lives Monday through Friday. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen.